In what's been said to resemble a massive internment camp shrouded in secrecy, China has been accused of detaining up to one million Uyghur Muslims in its Xinjiang region under what UN experts have called a pretext of countering terrorism and religious extremism. Over the past decade, human rights groups have documented widespread repression of this Turkic ethnic minority, from banning religious customs to forcing Uyghurs to change their Muslim names and attend Communist Party rallies. Beijing, however, denies allegations of mass detentions and discrimination. It says strict security measures in Xinjiang are aimed at preserving stability and preventing deadly attacks. But is the government's crackdown only going to lead to more unrest and more violence? And are the Uyghurs really a threat to Chinese national security? Joining me to discuss this are Nuri Turkel, chairman of the Uyghur Human Rights Project in Washington, D.C., and from Beijing, Victor Gao, vice president of the Center for China and Globalization, a Chinese think tank. Thank you both for joining me in the arena. Um, Victor, let me start with you. Hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs, perhaps up to a million, according to UN investigators, have been detained in the Xinjiang region without trial, uh, without charge, in re-education camps. How on earth can anyone justify that? No, such allegation is completely groundless, and I think they are designed to mislead the world. Uh, the Uyghur people are a very important minority, one of the 56 ethnic groups in China, and they are a proud member of the Chinese nation. And uh, I personally have many Uyghur friends here in Beijing, as well as in many cities in Xinjiang. To say that the Uyghur people are a threat to the Chinese nation, that's completely ungrounded again. Indeed, there are small groups of Uyghur extremists who want to achieve so-called independence for Xinjiang, for example. They are related to the overseas terrorist groups. They fight in Afghanistan against the American troops, against the NATO troops. Now they fight in Syria, for example. These people are not only a threat to China, but also a threat to the United States and to NATO and to many countries in the world. Therefore, I think we need to close ranks to fight against this particular terrorist groups among the Uyghur okay. nationality. Uh, Nuri, uh, the United Nations claims the amnesty claims about mass detentions are all groundless, says Victor. If that's what they claim, why don't they allow independent observers, media, to get access? As you may know, BuzzFeed reporter reporting on, China, uh, on the Uyghurs in China just kicked out of the country. What are they hiding for? Victor, we have satellite imagery showing that there are camps, they are growing in size. Are we not supposed to believe our own lying eyes? No, I think uh, uh, the reports uh, uh, do not exist in line with the realities. In Xinjiang altogether, there are about six or seven million Uyghur people. You are talking about let's say one million for the six or seven million Uyghur people in Xinjiang. That's ludicrous. These are not facts. These are misleading things. Try to diffuse, try to confuse the world. Nori, it is undeniable. There have been deadly attacks carried out in China by Uyghur groups, including by the so-called Turkestan Islamic Party, which the EU, the UK, the US have all designated a terrorist organization. The Chinese government isn't making up the security threat, is it? Let me, let me Even if you don't agree with let the measures me make they're this taking. very clear. Every country has a right to defend itself. End of the story, period. But locking up a few million people in concentration camps under the uh, claim of uh, uh, achieving social stability, national security, is, it doesn't make any sense. When you look at who they have been holding up, You'd be surprised the population pool. We have religious leaders, we have a humanitarian individuals, a philanthropist, the business leaders, we have a people in academia. New York Times just reported that 52 years old anthropologists have been disappeared. We have Ilham Tohti, that uh, Victor the Klink, economist, economist, member of civil society, uh, also sent uh, not know, a terrorist. Sent to of course. Yeah, has nothing. To, actually, well, there's only you can only spend so much. Victor is trying very hard. Well, let's bring but, let, but, let, know, let's bring Victor back. In. Let me ask Victor this. Victor, what is the security justification for banning Uyghur parents from naming their sons Muhammad, banning Uyghur children from entering mosques, banning government employees in Xinjiang from fasting during Ramadan, banning men from growing, quote, abnormally long beards? How is that not state-sponsored persecution and discrimination against Uyghur Muslims? Now, based on my personal experience and observation, what you said is not the tr truth in Xinjiang 
or in other parts of China. Mosques are very, very busy these days in many parts Victor, of China. Victor, you, you have to be truthful. There is a you regulation called the extremification measure that has well been implemented Xinjiang, since last April. Uh, Victor, be, be truthful. It specifically sanctions very normal behavior, such as growing beard, uh, carrying Islamic names, even marrying Uyghur people is considered extremist in that law. You can read that law. And also, as you know, there is a law uh, that uh, uh, governs counterterrorism issues. The Chinese government not only violating its international obligation, but also violating its own domestic laws, constitution, criminal procedures, even counterterrorism law. So you cannot deny, Victor, let's be honest, your government is violating their own laws, period. I know the importance of law is in China. I really hope everyone respects the law. However, in Xinjiang, the major threat we face is terrorism and extremism and separatism. And I think the authorities have a right to make sure that the innocent people are not harmed and that extreme version of religion of all kinds is not penetrating through the population. And then people cannot misuse religion as an excuse to stir up trouble, to destabilize, and to bring the society to a halt. And I think the people are justified to that. Let me ask you this, Nuri. Victor keeps talking about separatism being a threat. We know you said you don't support terrorism, most Uyghurs don't support terrorism. But on the issue of separatism, are organizations like your own and other Uyghur organizations around the world, are they only campaigning for the human rights of Uyghurs living in Xinjiang, who, according to all human rights groups and UN officials, are having their human rights abused? Or are you going a step further? Are you saying, actually, we want an independent so-called East Turkestan, uh, which existed perhaps for a few years in the late 1940s. <laughs> Is that what you're calling for? Because if you are, then it's understandable, at least, that the Chinese government aren't going to tolerate that. Most governments, democratic or otherwise, d aren't OK with separatist groups Anyone trying to break up the country. Anyone who know how to use a Google would know what the organization that I work with uh, stands for. We've worked to achieve the Uyghurs' uh, uh, right to self-determination through peaceful and democratic means. So when you say self-determination, what does that mean? You do want an we independent state. We want to state. run our affairs. We want to be treated f with respect That's and not what dignity. I asked do you yeah. want an independent state separate from China? You want At to break this point, away? maybe Uyghurs wanted to have an independent state. Okay, and you understand the Chinese government, like many Chinese other governments, government, aren't going to be okay with that. Chinese government, in a way, creating an anti-colonial resistance among the Uyghurs with their ruthless policies. Okay, let's put that point to Victor. Do you get that point, Victor, that you're driving Uyghurs more into the arms of extreme groups, separatist groups, making them much more anti-colonial? Listen, there are three evils in Xinjiang and uh, three evils involving certain parts of the Uyghur minorities. That is separatism, terrorism and uh, extremism. And uh, there are extreme elements among the Uyghur people who want to, let's say, achieve so-called independence of Xinjiang. In China, according to the Chinese law, this is treason. This is separatism. Okay, and but this you will didn't not answer my question, Victor. You're very good at avoiding Chinese a very straightforward will question. Not allow Xinjiang to walk That's away not what from I asked. the rest of China. I asked, if you lock people up, if you treat them like enemies of the state, to quote UN uh, investigators, is that not more likely to make them upset, angry, and more less likely to be want to be part of China? It, it's pretty straightforward. I think we need to be realistic and pragmatic as well as philosophical. I think Victor, the government and the people honest. are justified in Victor, using you need to be to honest. Make sure that these Victor, three you evils think... cannot be tolerated. Okay. Victor, Do you accept any mistreatment of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang? Do you think everything's fine? The answer is three evils need to Do be Do you think everything's out? fine in Xinjiang? That's because it. one Chinese official said the Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang are the happiest Muslims in the world. Do you agree with that rather absurd no. statement? The Uyghur people are a very proud member of the Chinese nation. They are a very important part of the Chinese civilization. They uh, believe in Islam. The majority of the people here in China more or less believe in Buddhism. We have different faiths. That's a reality. However, Victor, we are part Victor, of China. Your government is treating Chinese Islam as a mental and the disease. Nation Don't kid ourselves are in here. And sisters. Victor, be honest. Your government, that's the official line. Treating and perceiving Uyghur Islam as a mental disease. Listen, listen to me. If I practice or believe in three evils, I'll be arrested. 
I may be detained. I may be sentenced to many years in prison. Victor, we're not That's talking about three okay. Ewoks. As a Chinese okay, citizen, you cannot practice extremism, separatism, Victor, and terrorism. Victor, we're not talking about that three Ewoks. That is the we're basic about point. The university okay. professors, if you practice that, economists, terrorism, extremism, or soccer separatism, player, musician. there will be legal consequences. Okay, Let, we're going to have to wrap it up. One final question to you, Nuri. Uh, isn't the problem for the Uyghurs yeah. that even when the United Nations investigators come out and say, there may be a million people may have been detained. The world isn't really going to do much, are they? Because the Chinese government isn't the kind of government you could push around or sanction or intimidate. Muslim-majority countries aren't going to care about the Uyghur Muslims because they've got financial and trade deals with China, investment deals. What actually do you expect the international community to do? They can do a lot of stuff. Number one, they can sanction those uh, uh, politicians, uh, political leaders in China who are responsible for the egregious human rights violations taking place today. And number two, they should use its international uh, influence. China still cares about its international image. The face saving is a huge concern for the Chinese government. Using engagement, using legal tools available okay. at their disposal, and also uh, perhaps linking the human rights issue, the Uyghur issue to the trade uh, dialogue might be a possible solution in the short term. Nuri, we'll have to leave it there. Nuri Turkle, Victor Gao, thank you both for joining joining me in the arena to debate this very controversial issue. That's our show. Upfront, we'll be back next week.